And I'm just going to sit and speak out of order for five minutes, extend and revise my remarks. Without objection, gentlemen, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today is a bad day for America. Uh, we just passed to witness the passing of a bill that will have dramatic impact on our lives and our way of life uh, for years to come, if it should ever see the, the uh, president's uh, signature. One, ma one uh, matter of process, at 308, 309 this morning, the re Democrat majority landed on the, uh, on the internet a 300 plus page amendment to the already bloated bill that was passed. The, uh, apparently, the bragging on the thousands and thousands of hours of work and hearings and process that had gone into the development of the bill that was filed on Monday uh, left it a little short of the mark. Uh, in spite of all those thousands of hours, they were unable to get it right, so they had to use a little fine-tuning with a 300-pager that uh, was dropped this morning. So that issue aside, uh, Mr. Speaker, is a bad bill. Science, Mr. Speaker, is never settled. Uh, take the example of Galileo as, as an example. The consensus science of his time was that the earth was the center of the universe. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church believed it, and all the scientists who you and I have no clue who their names are believed it as well. Uh, Galileo, on the other hand, uh, bucked the system. He bucked it saying that, no, in fact, the sun was the center of the universe, and he spent the last years of his life under house arrest because he bucked the consensus science. Now, you and I both know that, uh, uh, that both the consensus science of that day and Galileo were wrong. Uh, most on the other side believe Washington, D.C. is the center of the universe, but that's a different conversation. Science is never settled. We should continue to ask the question. We should continue to question whatever it is that, uh, that's out there. The sense of urgency that the other side used to try to pass this bill uh, the way they've done it uh, evaporates. It is quite muted when you look at the details. 25-year uh, exemptions for certain uh, uh, energy companies to allow them to get their power plants in under the wire to get uh, support for this bill. Even the uh, ag amendment delays for six years the implementation of some of the provisions that will dr devastate ag. And so this sense of urgency seems to evaporate as well. The cost of this uh, bill will be thousands of jobs, as has already been said over and over. The empirical data is uh, the Spanish experiment of the last 12 years. Uh, report there on their greening of their economy shows that uh, for every single green job created, that two private sector jobs were uh, destroyed. Uh, of the green jobs created, only one in 10 were uh, uh, permanent jobs. Our own president has said that his cap and trade bill, which is the one that just passed, will cause electricity rates to skyrocket. Skyrocket, Mr. Speaker, that does not sound good when you're talking about the cost of a product that goes into every manufactured product in this country that every one of us who like air conditioning use. Uh, that's not a good idea. This bill also, Mr. Speaker, nationalizes the building codes. No longer will you be able to look to your local planning and zoning commission, your local city council as to how your, uh, the building code should be. You can't go to your state government. You're going to have to look to the federal government. Some bureaucrat in the bowels of this institution in this Washington, D.C. is going to decide whether or not you can build a house and what those standards should be. Uh, congratulations. Thank you so very much, Mr. Tenth Amendment. Mr. Speaker, the uh, MIT has a study that shows this will cost every family in America $3,100 for uh, uh, implementation of this bill. Um, it, it, all of the pain that's associated with this bill, and quite frankly, there is a lot of pain, and we'll just begin to see it uh, as the details unfold. So what do we get for that pain? I've recently asked a climate scientist who spends his, uh, feeds his family, basically, looking at this issue. I said, if we were able to pass the Waxman-Markey bill, can you, in fact, measure, after 40 or 50 years, the positive impact on our atmosphere? If we're going to spend $3,100 per family to get this done, if we're going to lose all these thousands of jobs, if we're going to decrease the standard of living in America as a result of this deal, what do we get for our money? He looked me right in the eye, Mr. Speaker, and said, maybe. Uh, maybe you can measure the impact? He said, yeah, we're maybe. Uh, the ca the uh, Congress on Racial Equality, not someone you'd normally think would uh, be doing things that uh, Republicans would agree with. Uh, their spokesman, Iger Ennis, talks about the study that they've performed that shows that should this happen, or actually should America go to a zero carbon footprint uh, over the next hundred years, that the, uh, the impact on the temperature will be like 0 0.07 degrees Celsius over that entire time frame. Again, not measurable. So a lot of pain uh, for no gain. Mr. Speaker, I guess the call to action for all of this is, uh, is to our fellow American citizens to get mad. 
I'm hoping that, uh, Mr. Speaker, this next week before they go to their 4th of July parades in their cars, which are, uh, uh, is a limited opportunity because there will soon come a day when they won't be able to drive those kind of cars that they want. We'll tell them the kind of cars that they'll want to drive, not, the, not themselves. But uh, I hope they get mad. Mr. Speaker, I hope they, uh, they use this climate change bill, uh, global warming bill, because we changed the, the uh, uh, phraseology because it's, uh, uh, the, the climate is not, uh, uh, not warming. I hope they use this to incent their tea parties on the 4th of July to go after us on this deal. I hope they begin to call their senators and tell them no on this deal. Call your congressman who voted for this nonsense. There are 219 of them. You can go to the web and find out who they are. Start calling them now and tell them they made a mistake, Mr. Speaker. This bill is bad for America. It's it's bad for our economy, and it will lower our standard of living. And uh, it was done simply to allow our General president to have a photo op in Copenhagen in December while the Chinese and the Indian leaders laugh behind his back. I yield back.